All right, Mr. Ahmed here for 8.2. Goal for today is to prove that triangles are similar by angle, angle. And what we're gonna look at here is the angle, angle theorem, which just states that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. And the reason why that's gonna be true is because all three angles would have to be congruent. And if all three angles are congruent inside of the triangle, then they are going to be similar. Now, uh, keep in mind, congruent triangles are also similar. This ratio of their side lengths is just one to one. So, in this diagram, angle B is congruent to angle E, angle A is congruent to angle D, so there are two congruent angles, thus the triangles are similar, using the squiggly similar mark. Uh, when you name them, make sure you put the corresponding parts in the correct order. Angle A corresponds with D, and angle B corresponds with E, C with F, all right? So, as I work through these problems, I am going to have to explain why. So I need to state that I have congruent angles. First thing I know is that angle D is congruent to angle G because both are right angles. And then I also uh, need to figure out which other pair of angles are congruent. Now from here I got some options. Right now I just have one pair. I see that this is 26 and this is 64, so I need to find the missing angle. Let's find angle K. Keep in mind the angles of a triangle add up to 180, so for me to find angle K, I'm just gonna take 180 minus 90 minus 64, and I get 26 degrees. So since angle K is 26 degrees, angle K is congruent to angle C, both equal 26 degrees. Therefore, I can state, this is a symbol for therefore, triangle. I'm gonna name the first one, uh, HGK. Is similar to triangle. So I need to figure out which one corresponds with H. Well, H was 64, so that has to be E. Then I went to G, that was 90, so 90 is D. So E, D, C. Angle C corresponds with angle K by the angle, angle theorem. All right, so we explained our reasoning. Next one, show that the two triangles are similar. So in order for me to show that these are similar, they have to have two congruent angles. First that I see, I'm looking at triangle A, B, E. So A, B, E is in blue and triangle ACD, and that appears to be this big one in red. So right now, I see that angle B, or angle ABE, is congruent to angle BCD, both equal 52 degrees. So that makes them congruent. Uh, now the next one, Angle A is congruent to angle A, up at the top. Reason why, it's the same angle for both the blue triangle and the red triangle. So angle A is congruent to angle A by the reflexive property. Therefore, triangle, oops, I wrote A, triangle ABE is indeed similar to triangle ACD by the angle angle theorem. Okay, so we have proven our reasoning. Next one, have to find two congruent angles, explaining our reasoning. So, vertical angles are the first thing I see. Angle SVR is congruent to angle TVU. And the reasoning behind that is they are vertical angles. Or we could have stated we use the vertical angles theorem. Next, I'm going this way and tracing my Z. So angle TUV is congruent to angle RSV. And I use the alternate interior angles theorem. Alternate interior angles are congruent. These two lines are parallel. They make the Z. So those two angles were congruent. Therefore, 
Triangle SVR is indeed similar to triangle UVT by the angle angle theorem. So we just need to list our two angles that are congruent and why, then we can state that the triangles are similar. All right, on to our next step here. Show that they are similar. What I want you to do here is hit pause, give them a shot on your own. All right, hopefully you had some success. So for you to determine that these are similar, let's see here. I see that angle F is congruent to angle K. And I also see angle G is congruent to angle R. And I guess the reason I would put for both of these is they are equilateral triangles. So all angles, 60 degrees. That's my reason for both. So now when I name it, I'm gonna say that triangle FGH is similar to triangle QRS by angle, angle theorem. All right, next one. 32, 58, need to find a missing angle. So I'm gonna find this one here. Keep in mind, all three have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 90. Minus 32 is 58 degrees. So this angle here is 58 degrees. So uh, the other thing I see is that this angle is 90. So I need to list that those two angles are congruent. So angle DFE is congruent to angle DFC, both 90 degree angles. I had to use the linear pair theorem in order to figure that out. And then lastly, angle CDF, I have to trace it. Angle CDF is congruent to angle DEF. Both 58 degrees. We have listed our reasoning why. So since those two angles are congruent, I can then state that the triangles are congruent. Has to be careful I name this one. So I'm gonna name the first one CFD is similar to triangle. Oh, I forgot to put the triangle sign. Triangle CFD is similar to, I started at 32, went to 90, and you do the same. 32 to 90 would be DFE by the angle, angle theorem. All right. And our next example says a flagpole. This is a proverbial flagpole problem. It's casting a shadow. It says that a flagpole casts a shadow that's 50 feet long, and at the same time, a woman standing nearby who is 5 foot 4 inches tall casts a shadow that is 40 inches long. How tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot? So, let's kind of take a look at this one here for a little bit. Uh, just a couple key pieces here. As the sun is sh uh, shining down, we have to uh, keep in mind that it's going to go down at the same angle for both the flagpole and the woman. So I'm gonna draw out two separate diagrams here. First, I'm gonna just draw the lady that's standing here like this. We're gonna assume that she's making a right angle with the ground and the sun is coming back down at the same angle. So that would mean that these two angles are congruent to the building, or sorry, the flagpole. That's gonna be a bigger one. So we'll draw this as a flag. It's waving in the wind and the sun is still shining down at the same angle for it. Okay, so I can measure what's on the ground a little bit easier than what I can measure going straight up and down. We're still assuming the building's going at a right angle, so these two angles are congruent, thus the two triangles are similar. Since the two triangles are similar, we can find some missing pieces. So it says the flagpole shadow's 50 feet long, and at the same time, a woman who is standing by is five foot four inches tall. So she is five feet four inches. And um, we're supposed to determine the height of the flagpole. And it just says that her shadow is 40 inches long. So as I set up the uh, proportion here, I do have to be a little bit careful to make sure I'm in the correct units. Okay, so 
Uh, the first thing I need to do is figure out how many inches is this? How many inches is five feet, four inches? So I know that uh, five times 12 is 60. So that means that there's 60 inches and five feet. So this is a total of 64 inches. All right, so I got that part set up now. I, I have a better idea of kind of what I'm taking a gander at there. So when I set up my proportion, X corresponds with 64 and 50 corresponds with 40. And then we can cross multiply to solve. I guess I should probably actually put the units in here. I'm looking for X feet. This is in inches, okay? And then my 40 is in inches, and this is in feet. So as I cross multiply to solve, I have 40X, and that's inches, feet. I'm just gonna put a side note here, inches, feet. And that's equal to 50 times 64. And that's 3,200. And in this case, we have inches, feet. And then I can divide by 40 to solve. So 3,200 divided by 40 leaves me with 80 feet. And we are good to go. And the reason why I'm left with feet is I wanted feet here. Uh, when I put this together here, we're looking for X number of feet. When I multiplied across, I had inches. And when I divide by the inches, the inches cancel and I'm gonna be left with feet, okay? Don't get to worry about that, not a huge deal. I just kinda wanted to show the units in case you were wondering. All right, so. The last step that we are looking for is, what if a child who is 58 inches tall is tanning next to the woman in example three? How long is the child's shadow? So we're gonna redraw another diagram here and I have my woman who is 64 inches tall and her shadow was 40 inches. This time I have a child standing next to her and that child's 58 inches tall we want to find out the length of the shadow on the ground, x. So 64 over 58, corresponding parts, is equal to 40 over x, cross multiply to solve. 64x equals 40 times 58, which is 2320, divide by 64, divide by 64, and we get, 36.25, and that's in inches. So it's a 36.25 inch shadow. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.